very much, everyone. Uh, and particularly thank you to uh, Julian there to, uh, for inviting me here to talk to you all. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, and uh, I'm absolutely petrified. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks. Frankly, uh, I hardly even leave the house much, so. Uh, I, know, I know people say that, you know, you should, when you're talking in a room like this, you should picture everybody naked. Um, well, rest assured, I'm doing that now for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I mean, the thing is, I do that quite a lot anyway. Uh, <laughs> not only when I'm nervous, it's so it probably won't help that much. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, um, I'll be here for the next 15 minutes. So, uh, naked, every one of you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not you. Uh, now, I, um, I have a twin brother, and when I told him that I'd been invited to speak here today, uh, he laughed, uncontrollably, actually, for, for about an hour. <laughs> uh, and, and he said, why on earth would they ask you? You're a complete joke. <laughs> Leaving aside the fact that my brother is, you know, clearly an idiot. <laughs> um, those words, you're a complete joke, gave me an idea. I realised I've spent, um, well an unhealthy amount of time on Twitter, attempting to write exactly that. A complete joke. A joke which has everything. Uh, you know, uh, and, and that I have done so without ever once stopping to think that what such a thing might be. You know, does it even exist? Uh, uh, can you write a joke which has everything? Can you write a joke which everyone will find funny? So the, um, the old adage is, comedy equals tragedy plus time. But that's nonsense, obviously. Uh, history is littered with tragedies which, even after thousands of years, you know, have never become even remotely amusing. <laughs> uh, there is surely a lot more to it than that. But um, is there a way of applying science and mathematics to comedy? Is there a formula? Here's what I decided to do. Right. One, identify the key ingredients of a great joke. Two, create a scoring system based on the perceived importance of each ingredient. And three, draw up a shortlist of brilliant jokes. Four, appoint an independent panel of judges and send them the jokes and the scoring system. And five, collate the scores and try to draw some sort of vaguely relevant conclusion. <laughs> so, part one, identify the key ingredients of a great joke. Joke. Well, um, comedy is, of course, subjective, so uh, family fortune style. <laughs> I asked 100 people what they looked for in a great joke. The most common answers are displayed in this word cloud. Word cloud. <laughs> so, uh, the, the words in the biggest fonts, uh, funniness and surprise, uh, they come back most often, while the words in the smallest font, anagrams and, and surrealism, they uh, <laughs> came back the least. Um, for reasons which will become clear later, I had these ingredients illustrated by my friend Tom McLaughlin, who also did the lovely cover image. The key ingredients. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, I, I, asked, I also asked people what distracted from a great joke. Um, the most common answers were anything offensive and also overcomplication. Um, so in theory, writing a complete joke should be relatively easy. You just need to follow this simple formula. So uh, the perfect joke would therefore follow this formula and manage each ingredient perfectly and take perfect delivery and audience expectation into account. Simple. <laughs> uh, but can it be done? Can one joke successfully incorporate all these good ingredients and possess none of the things which ruin a joke and be delivered perfectly and confound audience expectation? We'll see. <laughs> Part two. Create a scoring system based on the perceived importance of each ingredient. Now, um, the idea was to create, for each joke, a, uh, an overall score of 100. So, of the 100 people surveyed, they pretty much all said funniness was an essential ingredient of a, of a great joke. Well, 
a joke has to make you laugh. So most people said surprise, lots of people said brevity, whilst just one or two people mentioned anagrams and surrealism. Therefore, uh, funniness and surprise carry more value to a great joke than surrealism or anagrams. Accordingly, they're worth more points in my scoring system, um, which is shown here. So uh, the next thing uh, was to draw up a list of brilliant jokes. This was the fun bit. <laughs> I asked those 100 people to send me their favorite joke. Um, I might point out that actually no one sent me on Twitter one of my own jokes, which I think is a little bit rude. Um, thanks. But I, I, I put these jokes into the following categories. Yeah. Um, OK, so next, I had to appoint an independent panel of judges and send them the jokes and the scoring system. Um, I thought this was important as we had, that we had an independent panel as they uh, you know, represent a cross-section of society. And as much as possible, I managed this. I used Facebook. Mostly because I have around um, 600 followers on Facebook, approximately, uh, thanks, approximately seven of whom I actually see, so I thought the others better make themselves useful. <laughs> um, uh, I got several other people to post it on their Facebook walls too, and the response was huge. Um, admittedly, I, uh, I, sorry, additionally, I printed the jokes and the scoring system and spent a morning at, at Brighton Station. <laughs> handing them out in uh, prepaid envelopes to cover off the all-important 1% of society who like jokes but think social media is evil and should be avoided at all costs. So, all in all, nearly 200 people agreed to help me judge, uh, the youngest person being 16, the oldest being 71. Uh, and they were all from different types of background. Um, the only common link was that they all had a large amount of spare time and were available at short notice. <laughs> Um, the idea was not only would I be able to measure the quality of the joke, but I would also be able to analyse the response by, um, by age and gender and social class, etc. You, know. um, you can't please all of the people all of the time, obviously. But can you please all of the people ever? <laughs> the final thing I had to do was collate the scores and try to draw up some sort of vaguely relevant conclusion. <laughs> Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, um, I divided the jokes into the categories. I, I thought I'd, I'd share with you the, the highest scoring jokes from and the main observations on each category. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that the vast majority of these jokes were written by non-professional joke writers. If you look around a bit, um, you know, uh, Twitter is absolutely heaving with undiscovered talent. So, uh, Now, uh, due to time restraints, I, uh, I can only read out the top, top rating joke in each category. And beneath each joke is the symbol for the key ingredients it contains. So, the highest scoring clever joke was this, by Megan Amram. There's literally no way to know how many chameleons are in your house. Now, in terms of observation on clever jokes... <laughs> you like that? <laughs> In terms of observation on clever jokes, this was the highest ranked category for originality, observation and wordplay. Clever jokes also scored much more highly among older judges than, than younger judges, clearly indicating the human race is getting stupider with each generation. <laughs> um, now, sorry? I can't remember, I'm afraid. I have to have a look. It's not in Tom's drawings are good as well, aren't they? Who knows? Um, now, sorry, sorry, sorry. Silly jokes. There we go. The top-rated silly joke was this one, written by Quinton Forbes. Katie Tunstall's full name is Kermit the Tunstall. <laughs> Observations. Every oh, hello. <laughs> Everyone likes silly jokes. Um, despite silliness coming some way down the list of key ingredients, silly was easily the highest-ranked category for funniness. Now... <laughs> sorry, can you... Rude, rude jokes. The top-rated rude joke. This one by Benedict Fass. <laughs> How many perverts does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just me, but it takes two nurses and a surgeon to get it out again. Observations. 
My aunt thinks Benedict Farr should be ashamed of himself. <laughs> but she'd still like to meet him. <laughs> uh, rude jokes scored high, uh, incredibly highly for intelligence. Female judges scored rude jokes considerably more highly than male judges. I have no comment to make on this. <laughs> However, um, there, there was no obvious differences in the scores for rude jokes in terms of age, indicating that we're just a nation of perverts. <laughs> okay, moving on to dark jokes. <laughs> the top-rated dark joke was this one, written by Michael Raffone. Actually, the past tense is hanged, as in he hanged himself. Sorry about your dad, though. Uh, observations. Funnily enough, this was the only category in which anyone took five marks off for offence. Um, the dark category was the lowest scoring for funniness, but scored very highly for intelligence. Uh, there was also a clear gender difference here. Uh, the overall scores for dark jokes were far higher among male judges than female. Uh, finally, dark jokes were far more popular among older judges than younger. Maybe our mindsets just get darker as we get older. Uh, okay, subversive jokes. Um, just to clarify uh, what I meant by subversive, uh, this category was full of jokes which took long-standing and or popular joke formats and turned them into something, into something new. So, the top-rated subversive joke... <laughs> It was written by Derek Morecambe. What do you call a man with a spade in his head? An ambulance. This is no joking matter, he's got a fucking spade in his head. <laughs> Observations. These jokes did really well. <laughs> Reworking old or easily recognisable jokes surprises people, and this was really, this is easily the highest scoring category for surprise. So finally, topical jokes. Uh, the top-rated topical joke was this one by Nick Motown. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. The Eurozone's Facebook page has changed its currency status from single to its complicated observations. Now, judging by the difference in scores by age, young people really don't keep up to date with current affairs. <laughs> um, topical jokes scored very highly for cleverness, but relatively poorly for funniness. Um, as you might expect, topical jokes tend to work best when they're topical. They don't really travel well. Um, so, the overall results. Uh, this, this table shows the categories ranked by age and gender. Uh, Uh, the, the other main observations that, that was the highest scoring jokes are rarely contained more than half of the key ingredients. So the joke which ticked the most boxes was this one, a topical joke written about Fred Goodwin by Jake's as in Hattie. Circumcision, <laughs> having your knighthood removed. <laughs> so uh, this is as near to a complete joke as you can find, ingredients-wise. Uh, it had 12 out of the 15 key elements. <laughs> which, um, which, le which leads me to conclude that a joke with all 15 elements is possible. I just haven't found it yet. Um, but what about a perfect joke? Uh, how close to a perfect score of 100 did our selection get? Well, pretty close, actually. <laughs> uh, to finish, I thought I'd share with you the 10 highest scoring jokes. I may have to rush through these a bit due to time constraints, but I think that'll just highlight the importance of delivery. Okay. Um, <laughs> the best thing about alcohol hand gel in hospitals isn't the hygiene, but that everyone walks around like they're hatching a dastardly plan. <laughs> a cub scout came to my door asking if I wanted any odd jobs doing. I've got him glittering an aardvark. <laughs> Mummy, what's an orgasm? I don't know, ask your father. 
Hey, Sean Bean. It's either pronounced Sean Born or Seen Bean. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> the Swedish have finally finished their case against Assange. They were just crossing their O's and dotting their U's. <laughs> My son just accused me of making stuff up. I wouldn't mind, but I don't even have any children. <laughs> Russian dolls are so full of themselves. <laughs> Dear religion, pics or it didn't happen. Love science. <laughs> it's sad how Wiley Coyote is remembered for his violence and not for his brilliantly realistic paintings of tunnels. <laughs> and finally, the highest rated joke of all, written by John McLaughlin. What do you get if you cross an octopus with a cow? A stern rebuke from the Research Ethics Committee and an immediate cessation of funding. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a common link between these jokes? Well, well yes, to a point. Uh, they all take recognisable situations or phrases and find something different about them. The most successful jokes are observational and surprising, uh, where people are surprised by the punchline, but they still find themselves wondering, why didn't I think of that? Uh, but will every person, regardless of their age, gender, or social status, find every one of these jokes funny? No. More often than not, there were clear distinctions between the scores awarded by age and sometimes by gender, too. Um, do the similarities between these jokes prove the existence of a magic formula? Ooh. No, of course not. <laughs> the idea that you can write a complete joke by using a formula is, in fact, itself a complete joke. Um, <laughs> Comedy is subjective, uh, and too much of it depends on the audience. Uh, there is no such thing as just one joke which every person in the world will laugh at. Um, I knew this from the beginning. <laughs> I just thought I could have a bit of fun proving it. <laughs> so, um, and I did, I had a blast, and I hope you did too. So thank you so much, thank you.